Hi, everybody. It's Sharla. Um, we're here. We're um, going to be interviewing uh, Transmedium Elaine Thorpe today. Uh, so we're just going to wait for Elaine to get on. So give us just a few minutes. As soon as I see her in there, I'll go ahead and invite her in. But while we're uh, waiting for Elaine, a um, few announcements. Uh, we have First Friday coming up on April 6th at Zen and Now. Uh, it's going to be our last First Friday. Uh, as you know, Zen and Now is closing. I believe in June, Kelly's going on to uh, kind of other endeavors, so um, she'll be moving on. But I will be there from 5 to 8 giving uh, many readings, uh, and there are is a limited number of uh, individual readings available. So, um, and readings are available for the first uh, people who make $10 purchases until all the spots are filled. Um, so that's coming up. Don't forget, uh, August 12th, we have Totem Pole Playhouse, When Spirit Speaks Gallery event. Uh, that is a fundraiser for Totem Pole Playhouse. Uh, tickets are available uh, via Totem Pole Playhouse's website. Also, my website as well. Or you can go to my website with all the links are there. They're also on Facebook as well. Okay, let's just see. Just waiting for Elaine to get in. As soon as Elaine pops in, I will go ahead and invite her in. She should be on there any minute, hopefully. Bear with me. <laughs> Just waiting. Elaine, I hope you're... Julie, I see you live. Elaine, I still don't see you live yet. Hi, Allison, I see you. Elaine, just give me a little hello when you're on there, and then I will slide over and go ahead and invite you in. Hi, Julie, I see you on there. Hi, Kim. Hi, Robin. Brenda, hi, how are you? Still waiting for Elaine. She should be on any minute. For those of you who have uh, not had the opportunity to see Elaine or watch Elaine, she is truly amazing. Um, so hopefully as soon as she jumps in here, um, you'll be as amazed with her as I am. Okay. Still waiting. Whoops. Shane. Hi, Shane. Elaine, again, when you're out there, just give us a hello so we know that you're there. God, I love technology. <laughs> Hi, Gloria. Gloria's out there. Hi, Deborah. I'm going to go back here and check for Elaine again. Okay. Just what, reading some of your comments. Bella, I see you. Joanna, I, how are you? Okay, just reading your comments, guys. Again, Elaine, just jump on and give us a hi so I know that you're on there so I can give you the invite. There she is. Um, I'm going to swoop over. She should be coming on any minute. I see it says adding Elaine. Bring Elaine on camera. 
She's trying, folks. Just hang on. Hopefully, we were on here. There she is. Hi, Elaine. All right. Sorry about my phone. It's a bit close up. I know. That's okay. It's it's just been it's been crazy. Technology. You gotta love it. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Thank you for having me on. Oh, I'll just sort for... this out. That's bit. okay. Take your time. Otherwise, you won't be able to see me, will you? It's on a mobile, you see. Otherwise, if I use my other tablet, it's not yep. got a very good camera on it. Okay. Well, hopefully, we can uh, uh, we can see you. Um, so, anyway, Elaine, thank you for coming on. Um, we are so excited for those of you, uh, for those of us who don't know what you do. Um, Elaine is a trans medium. And Elaine, can you tell us um, basically the difference between um, an evidential medium such as myself and someone who does trance work? Well, somebody who does uh, trance work, they, hold on, I've got a message in there. Can I just get rid of it? Sure. <laughs> Guys, just bear with yeah. us because this is all new to no, us. The difference between trance work is instead of you having mental mediumship, which which is where the guide impresses thoughts into your mind so that you can speak them out as, as evidential words, uh, we go into a relaxed state, which then allows the spirit to come through themselves and blend with your energy, and then you, you work like that from there. Awesome. And how, tell us just a little bit about your journey and how you got started in the trans mediumship for those people who don't know. Well, it happened several years ago, around about 12 or so years ago. And I, I just went on a holiday to, to Ireland and, and I missed my father-in-law, my ex-husband's father. And I missed him and I wanted him to, to make himself known when we all went to bed. I thought, oh, can you do something to let us know you're here? This is our last night in Ireland. I, I miss you. And then nothing happened, you see. So I, I didn't know about trance. So I only ever knew about my father's um, physical. And all of a sudden, I, I started to drift off to sleep thinking nothing would happen. And, and then this voice bellowed out from me and I thought I was just... I couldn't be talking in my sleep because I was half awake and, <laughs> and you know half awake half asleep and I thought have I just spoken in my sleep and heard it but it didn't feel like that at all it, it felt like strange you know I'd never experienced anything like it and the children said well that was loud mum you scared the living daylights out of us what are you doing <laughs> so <laughs> after that you know uh, uh, I decided that before I went home, I'd ring my mother's friend, who was a hypnotherapist, and she said it's trance. So she said, well, it maybe you need to develop it. I said, well, what's trance? I've never heard of it. She said, well, you should know, because your father's a physical medium at the time, and and um, I think he was sort of lessening down then because he wasn't too well, so he wasn't really doing it as such anymore. And then, and then she said to me... Um, you know, go go to Kay Austin, who who's a teacher of trance. So I, at first, I joined a meditation group, and and I wasn't comfortable with it because I I suffer with anxiety, and I thought she's asked us to go downstairs in this meditation group towards the beach, and I thought I can't go there. I totally panicked and woke up, and I thought no, I can't do this. So I, I went back to the trance evenings a, a few weeks later. And I thought, well, I don't want to do the meditation group. I, I don't feel comfortable with it. I went back to the trance. I tried that, and straight away, this this gentleman who I'd never heard of and never knew came through, and his name was George. But he made the whole of my body go stiff. Oh wow! It's all good and tight, and I didn't like it. And I thought, God, if this is what trance is about, I'm not so sure. And I said, look, if you're going to come through, can you not bring your ailments through with you? What you're suffering <laughs> with, because I I don't want my body going all stiff and tight. And, they said my face had dropped, so I assume he'd had a stroke. He passed a stroke. And then as time went by, I, I sat with the group weekly, and I began to really like it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just happened to go into my friend's house next door, and she said to me, can you do your trance? And I said, uh, I'm not so sure. I said, I, I, I don't know if I want to do it or not. I've only been doing it a few months. And Oh, please, she said. So she said, everyone's got home now. So I, I did the did it. I cannot remember for the life of me who came through or what happened. 
But then at the last, my guide showed himself. Never, never heard of him in my physical life and never, never seen him or know who he was. But at that moment, I felt complete unconditional love and I knew who he was. I thought, well, I don't know you, but I feel like I've known you forever and I love you forever. And it was the most wonderful feeling that he gave me. Wow. And then he had to start learning how to speak. And he spoke a bit sort of um, with no expression at first for the first few months. I got old tapes from 2005 and wow. 2006. And over time, over a year, a couple of years, he gradually learned to speak like he does. And 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 it kept going into sort of high, then low, then and then it then it just dropped completely. And then he he'd learned completely how to use my vocal cords. Then there was no more. Um, high and low and anything like that it was a bit like a teenager's voice really as uh, when a young man you know grows into a man from a teenager the voice breaks it was a bit like that and I thought what are people going to think you talking through me like a man you know they're going <laughs> to think think that you know I'm a bit embarrassed you know I didn't want anyone to know at first and then uh, they started putting me into uh, I, I started my own group and for month, well, years, we sat there in that little group and, and friends would come and go and people would come and sit with us. And then I, I met um, a friend of mine at the church and she invited me to do an evening. That was that was a bit nerve wracking. And that, that was that, really. It's just, just gone from there. It's just taken off for you. Now, Elaine, are you aware when Jonathan is uh, speaking, do you remember... Uh, what Jonathan is saying or talking about or or, or is it kind of uh, I know when I do mediumship and and sometimes I'm bringing spirit through I really don't remember my readings um, so is trance oh, like sorry. that yeah it, it sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't if I if I go into a, a slightly lighter state of trance I can remember some of the things that said so it's a little bit like having a long conversation with someone. You forget bits, don't you? Right. And then right. You, go, you go to recall back. And strange things happen under the trance. I, I've seen, um, I've never seen spirit physically when I'm awake. But when I'm in sleep, you can feel them. But um, when I'm in trance, you can you can feel them. So sometimes you forget and you experience different things. And you wake up and you don't recognize the people you're sitting with all the time. You know, one person came to me. And um, I opened my eyes and I could have sworn she looked completely different. And I'd only been in the room under the trance for an hour. And I thought, you didn't look like that. <laughs> Not while I was under the trance. But she looked totally different. And I thought, that's, that's crazy. Now, why do you think, Elaine, um, Jonathan, uh, what, I guess I want to say, what was Jonathan's purpose? Is he here, uh, for those of uh, people listening who aren't aware, is he here to bring awareness? Um, what do you feel Jonathan is, uh, the work you're doing with Jonathan, what do, what do you feel the highest purpose is? I think it's the higher purpose of the two of us is, is to help this world, you know, to, to help people realize that there is life after death and, and that um, when we when we die in the physical body, we go somewhere wonderful, meet our loved ones. There's nothing to be afraid of. And, and also, for, you know, for the skeptics, because they, they, do, they might think, oh, there's no more after this. And they might be scared when they go to pass. They might be petrified and think, well, that's it. This is it. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I'm dead. I'm no more existence. Where do I go? Where am I? Where's my consciousness? Well, our, our consciousness carries on on the other side. It's just a consciousness. Although we have a full physical body, our consciousness lies within within here and within our parts. And then we go to the other side and, and we have a consciousness that carries on for eternal or eternity rather. And that that is what happens. And this is what we're trying to bring the message across. Mm -hmm. And for people that have got um, gifts and they don't understand them, they might need advice in their lives. They might need help. They, they might miss their loved ones and can't cope, so they have to rely on mediums to to bring their loved ones through, and it puts their mind at rest, doesn't it? It's, yes. it's um, If there's nothing to believe in and you don't ever know nothing, it must be pretty scary. If, say you're going to pass, like I just said, or say you've, you've lost a loved one, that must be 
awful. You, you don't know where they are. You don't know if they live on. You, you just think, well, they're dead, that's it. Right. And it must be horrible. And when they suddenly find out with evidence that their loved ones go on, that must mean the world to them. That must make them feel totally different about life after that. Knowing yeah. that they can, they can get in touch with their loved ones and and uh, their minds are put at rest. Now, Elaine, how do you deal with, um, I guess, as you know, you know, there's so many, um, the negative part of, of doing trance. Uh, uh, not everyone is accepting of trance or non-believing. How do you deal with that negativeness or that negative vibration? Well, if, if somebody doesn't believe what I'm doing. Or calls it uh, demonic or you know how people um, who don't understand it and and uh, don't even take uh, the time to try and understand it. Um, how do you deal, I guess, with the negative criticism that you get? Does that bother you or does that affect? It does bother me sometimes. Obviously, I'm, I'm human and I'm sensitive and I get upset over it. And my, my uh, partner says, you know, don't dwell on it. They're, they're just either jealous or they've got their own insecurities or, or they, they just don't understand. And, and there are people out there, they've never heard of trance. They just think, oh, well, that person's putting on an act. How could they do that? You know, oh, we don't live on after death, so there's no such thing. And it's not until they get actual evidence that they un begin to understand, well, maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. And, and sometimes, you know, if um, you've got other religions, might not re respect it. They might think it's wrong. But... To me, as long as you do it the right way and work in the light, think positive, then how can it be wrong? We're praying, we're asking for protection. We're, we're bringing in such pure love and, and light. That is what I want to do. And I assume others want to do. So what, what would be wrong about it? Right. It feels no, think... right. It's so wrong at all. Right. Um, now you do spiritual painting as well. Now what inspires you? Does Jonathan help you and inspire you with that too, your, with your artwork? Or is that just something that, uh, do you use your guides for that? How do you create these beautiful drawings that, that we see? Well, actually, my, I, I was uh, just going about the mundane tasks one day, going to put the clothes away like women do. They put the washing away. And all of a sudden, something came into my mind. I thought, oh, it must be me. Surely the human mind doubts when you're just thinking in general. But it just popped into my head. And they said, you're going to be doing painting. I said, well, and I thought, oh, I did. OK, well, that must have been spirit because I wasn't thinking that. And it's been just impressed in this minute onto my mind. So I said, well, am I? I said, I don't know how to paint. And they said, well, we'll show you. So I just started with chalks. So I started with, um, you know, the, the not not the ordinary chalks, but the pastels. I started with them and I seemed to want to go to anywhere that felt deeply spiritual. It, it was like everything was spilling out of me and, and I was able to express whatever I felt inside, whatever spirit wanted me to feel. And, and what I imagine to be the afterlife, you know, the, the beautiful side. And it was so strong. And, and then I thought, well, I'll, I'll do what I can. And, and I started with all the chalks at first. And then I took them to a fair and I thought that people are going to think these are rubbish. You know, I'm no <laughs> artist. I'm no professional. I've never been taught what in life only at school. So they, one man came up to the table and, and he said to me, Oh, these pictures draw you in, and and then this other woman came up, and I thought, oh, they must think they're rubbish. Oh, well, I feel so embarrassed, you know. And they really were quite interested in them. And then people, so I thought, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll put them on my Facebook page and let people see what I do. And and I got comments coming in gradually, and then other people come on, have a look. Do you sell them? I said, well, I suppose I do. Yeah. And so they all started coming to to purchase ones and, and few were left in the house. So they come out of the house and purchase them if they were having readings. And I thought, well, this is, this is good. And it was getting deeper and deeper. I wanted, I wanted so much to express 
the love I have for spirit and, and what I perceive to be the other side. So they started showing me scenery and and I thought, well, if I just create a mess, I wonder if something will come out of that, you know? <laughs> Places started appearing in it and, and scenery and I thought, I can see another world. It's weird. I'll have to fill it in and paint it. And it was coming out of the picture right at me. So if someone commissions some, uh, commissions a painting from you, um, do you feel their energy and inspired at all by that? Or is it just just your draw of what you're feeling at the moment? Uh, sometimes I, I tune into their energy. I put, put the music on because I have to paint the music. Mm -hmm. I can't paint the music. I, I put the music on and, and I think of the person for a few minutes. And, and they keep popping into my mind as I'm doing it. And then I start to create what they want me to create, what spirit want me to do. So it just, it does feel like they're sort of standing with me. Right. And, you know, you think, well, are they here or is it just me? You know, it just, but I can feel it within. It's like it boils up within and I want to create more and more and more. I can't stop. It's like an addiction. <laughs> Well, they're beautiful. And for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to see Elaine's paintings, um, now you've created a business page, Elaine. What's the name? Is it Spiritual Wisdom? Is that the name of your business page? That's uh, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, go to that, but also on Elaine's personal page, you have a lot of your paintings. Have you put them on your business page yet? Your paintings? I've put and a couple of them on there. I, I intend to put more on there, you know, so that people can just browse and have a look at some idea of what I do. Most yeah. people go through my page and have a look, but for yeah, anyone that doesn't know about it. If you don't know uh, or you haven't seen Elaine's work, please go to her page. Um, it's just amazing. Um, Elaine did a painting for me and I love it and it, it hangs in my office and it inspires me so much when I do my readings and, um, you know, her paintings are just amazing. So I thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I, I love that one. I keep looking at it, actually. Mm, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, kind of um, a, it's like a childlike fantasy, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's like going into another world in a storybook. It's lovely. Yeah, and it just focuses me. It's just an amazing painting. So, you know, if you, you have the opportunity to browse or get a painting from Elaine, I highly, highly recommend it. Because they are very personal in nature. Uh, and I don't know, it, it just, it's, it's just what, it's my favorite piece I have, so... Um, awesome. So Elaine, what we've done, um, I've, I asked prior to, I know we're, um, you're going to um, be gracious enough to let Jonathan talk to us for a little bit. Um, and I've asked the viewers um, for some of their questions um, that we may have for Jonathan. Um, so um, are you ready to allow Jonathan to come through for a little bit? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. Okay. Okay, you you just relax, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Hello, my dear. It is nice to meet you. I am nothing other than fine, thank you. Yes. Good. Well, thank you for being here with us today. Likewise, yes. So, Jonathan, I've asked some of the uh, audience uh, some questions uh, for you. And one of the uh, questions... Uh, that came up a lot was uh, people were wondering uh, what happens when we transition to the other side. Can you tell us anything about that or the process? Yes, of course. When, when you transition to the other side, most people purport to go into a beautiful light 
and, and they feel the warmth and the love as they are flowing through that light and they feel great a deal of peace and, and pure love. And, and when they get to the end of that, their loved ones are waiting for them. And sometimes they will see beautiful scenery where their loved ones are, or they will see the light around them and calling them. And can you tell us, um, we often heard about, you know, once we go through the light and our loved ones are there, um, we often go through a life review or a review of our life. Can you tell us anything about that or, or the purpose of our life review? The purpose of your life review is it is it is flashed before you very quickly and, and you have seen everything that you have ever done in your life and experienced and felt as well. And that, that all flashes by in a minuscule moment, but you will take every bit of it in because it will be like a photographic memory, so to speak. And you will see what you have learned in life, what your selfish moments were, what your happy and loving moments were, all of that. And, and then you will observe it and, and see what you have learned from it and where you, you could have done better and uh, where the good parts were, you see. That is what you do. And one of the uh, common questions that um, I was asked, um, we know when someone passes, you know, from illness uh, that, you know, our loved ones are maybe there waiting because they know that we're, you know, our time here on earth, uh, we're going to be making that transition. But what about uh, individuals? One of the things that was asked, um, what about when someone, say, passes in a tragedy, such as a car accident or um, something? Do, are are the, our relatives and our loved ones on the other side, are they aware um, that that's happening and will they still be, be there to meet us when we cross? Oh, yes, very much so. I think that sometimes in, in certain cases, you will find that the soul will hang back a little. And, and because it has been a traumatic time, it's not because they are lost, it's because they're wanting to get in touch with the loved ones and let them know that they're going to be doing fine on the other side. So they will hang around until things settle down. So we'll hang around kind of on the earth plane. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is right. And, and, and once their funeral is over, they seem to be more at peace. But the majority will feel themselves uh, raising above their body and they can see all the things that are going on. And they feel a great deal of peace and comfort and no pain. And then the guide or the loved ones will come with them and take them into the light. That is what happened with me, you see. I passed very quickly with a heart attack and I was not expecting anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. and, and then my, my grandmother came to meet me and, and she said, well, Jonathan, yes, uh, I, I looked at her and I, I looked at my body and I realized that I felt free. And, and when she came to collect me, she took my hand and I said, but you are dead. <laughs> you are dead, grandmother. How can you be holding my hand? She says, Jonathan, you, you have passed away. Your, your body is not very well and we cannot revive you. So you are going to have to come with us now. And I said to her, well, where are we going? Are we going to see God? And, and she says, yes, we are. And, and I'd like you to take my hand so that I can take you into the light. We have an angel with us and she's going to take you into the light and I'm going to come to comfort you. And, and I left my body and I, I went into a beautiful, uh, all encompassing, loving light. And it was most beautiful, my dear. Okay. And another uh, common question, Jonathan, was our, our, our fur babies, our animal friends. Do we see them or will they come to meet us when we pass? Yes, they do. But they are not segregated from us, as people would think. They, they go into the beautiful golden cornfields on the other side, and a lot of them call it Rainbow Bridge. So we all have different uh, ways of explaining things, but they do come and be with us, yes. If we want to be with our animals, I am with my beagles, I am with my horses. Yes, we can be amongst our animals. They're not segregated. Beautiful. And another question that uh, people were asking a lot about was reincarnation. Uh, do we come back? And uh, with that in reincarnation, we were always told that um, we have a contract or a plan uh, set uh, prior to us coming back to Earth or to this side. Is that is? Can you tell us anything about that? 
Well, with reincarnation, it is a decision that you make to come back into the physical life. There may have been things that you didn't finish off in the past life, or there may have things been things that you did not overcome in that life, and you want to go back and experience it again. So you will come back again, and you will make a soul contract and go into a physical body. And, and then exactly what you planned on the other side before you were conceived upon the earth, you will take with you. And, and come into this life again and, and live it in the way that you had but planned. And, and even if you say, well, Jonathan, we, we change our minds when we are on the earth. Even the changing of your mind is planned, my dear. Everything is intricately planned. Beautiful. And uh, what about suicide, Jonathan? Um, that's kind of a, a dark subject, but um, do those souls... Uh, do they have a harder time in transitioning or uh, is it? I think the majority of the majority of them go ac across eventually, my dear, but they do uh, have a traumatic stage. Some of them whereby they are hanging back. They feel remorse for what they've done. They may be frightened because they think, well, I can't go back now. It is too late. And, and a lot of them hang around and, and they have to know what they have done. Even if they go into the light, into the other side, they have to see what they have done. You see, they have to take a look at why they had done it and, and how they could have got help for it. And, and sometimes it is a mental illness, so it cannot always be avoided, my dear. If, if you've got somebody with bipolar or manic depression, they, they want to take their lives and, and it is very difficult to get help for them then we do understand that. They are not cast aside. They are given unconditional love. But sometimes they will go to a place where they need to reflect. Beautiful. Um, now, what I don't know and I don't know, um, I've always uh, felt that on the other side, we have work to do there as well. So um, can you give us any insight? Do people have jobs or work or schooling or, or are they still learning and training and preparing maybe uh, to come back uh, in another form here? Well, we do not have jobs, my dear. We, we have more vocation. We, we choose to do something as much as like you choose to do things here on earth, but you have earthly jobs and earthly things to do. But we do not require to earn a living like you do here on earth. There is no, there is no monetary situations here. There is no vehicles and, and we do not need to eat or drink or anything like that. We don't even need to sleep because we don't have a physical body anymore. But our, our thing is a, a vocation. We choose to do something. So we may choose to come and learn how to connect with you in the physical world and how to blend with an energy that is human. And, and we will work with you. And, and sometimes uh, people or souls rather will remain in spirit and, and work from that side as, as healers and, and people that are going to send messages. Yes, and, and some of them will go into the higher realms of work from there, you see. So it is not necessarily work, it is a vocation. It is something that we choose to do. And we are constantly learning on the other side. So there are the halls of learning and we do like to enter into those. And we do like to ask the ascended masters, as you call them, questions about uh, life on earth and life in spirit and how we can improve life on earth and how we can learn more on the other side. So lots of things that we do learn. Yes. Awesome. Now, somebody asked Jonathan um, about extraterrestrials. Are there other dimensions, other uh, life other than our planet? Well, a lot of you would say, well, how can that be? You know, what a load of rubbish, all these UFOs and things uh, hanging about. Uh, most of them are uh, pretend and, and fake. But uh, yes, there are those, of course. But uh, do you think that you are the only ones in the universe? The universe, my dear, is, is, is eternal. It is, it is beyond massive, I would say. The description of it is is forever and it doesn't end and it doesn't begin so you are not the only planet here there are other planets that surround your planet and and uh, support her but beyond those galaxies are other planets that are totally undiscovered and, and cannot be reached because they are too many millions of miles away to get to so yes there are other beings on other planets in other galaxies 
Okay. And Jonathan, Allison is asking, which realm or plane or level have you reached in spirit? There are no levels. They, they are, as what you call, the, the God used to say in the Bible, there are many mansions. So as you learn, your soul raises upwards. So it is it's not a level, so to speak. You, you are raising, you are elevating, you are progressing your soul into the higher realms of spirit. And when you say realms, they're not levels. They are, they are places of knowledge. Okay. Whatever you have learned, you gain, uh, you get wiser as each life goes forward. And you go back to spirit world knowing a little bit more. And you learn on the other side as well. So you elevate yourself. Okay, and Jonathan, somebody is asking about vibration. Um, we spend a lot of time, uh, you hear uh, people talking about vibration and uh, negative vibration. How uh, do you recommend uh, or what can we do uh, in the physical realm to, um, if we have trouble raising our vibration, what are some of the things that you can recommend that help us to, to get a higher vibration? Well, I, I would say, you know, uh, number one is, is looking after mind health, isn't it? Because whatever you think you are, you are bringing to you, so to speak. It, it is what you think is what you are. You, you are learning how to think in a positive manner. You will attract positive thought. And, and, and if you look at the brain, if it is tested with something, I will give you an example. If you give the, the brain, if you give the person a tablet, two tablets. One is a placebo, the other is a drug. And it takes the placebo thinking, well, this is, must be a drug, so I will take it, it will make me better. The brain believes that and then makes the person better by itself, thinking that the placebo drug is something of a drug that will cure them, you see. So mm -hmm. whatever you teach your mind to think, it will react to that. What things do you recommend? What if somebody has a hard time? They're always thinking negative thoughts and they have a hard time getting out of that. Um, what are some well, things that they can do to mm -hmm. try to uh, switch the mind to a more positive place? Well, it is thinking positive, listening to happy music, doing things that make them happy, staying away from negative people and negative situations, and, and trying to love oneself. The, the important thing as, as to love others is to love oneself, isn't it? And if they are not loving and appreciating, themselves they're not going to feel happy with themselves that's going to make them think negative you see if you listen to what other people say some people will give you good advice and give you uh, nice compliments and then there are others out there that uh, are not so good well usually they are insecure with themselves if they are not uh, uh, nice to others there is something that, of an insecurity and an anger inside of them that they need to deal with so if you want to think positive in life it is doing the things that you enjoy being amongst people that make you feel good about yourself and and really uh, teaching your mind through meditative states and thought patterns to think in a positive manner so do you feel meditation is important in our everyday life i think that it is my dear because there are so many stressed people in the world and they need them and they're rushing about here there and everywhere and if they were just to stop for just a few moments and, and breathe and relax their mind, perhaps to music or just total peace and quiet, they would feel a lot different to what they are feeling in a stress state. So the mind health is such an important thing in everyday life. Yeah, Running we, around yourself in a state is not good. Yeah, and we seem to have such a hard time in, in, on uh, this plane. Uh, you know, I, I feel like sometimes we spend more time in negative vibration than we uh, do in positive vibration. And I wish that yeah. so many could, like, flip that a little bit. Yes, I think that uh, if you are constantly being fed with negative, then you're going to feel that way. For instance, uh, uh, people who watch violent films, and they're going to feel some sort of vibration from that, aren't they? A negative vibration. Whereas if you're watching a positive, loving film on the television or the cinema, then you're going to feel good about it. You're going to come out of there feeling wonderful. So it does have an effect on the brain. Anything that you listen to, you take in each day of your everyday life, does have an effect on the thinking. So that's my advice is to listen to happy music, 
do the things that you enjoy, be amongst nice people, and you will feel a lot better about yourself and others. Things but that there are all those sort of people in life, my dear. You cannot avoid them completely. The question is, how many positive people have you got and how many negative people tell you that you are good or bad? You know, it, it's, it outweighs, it's usually the nice people that outweigh the bad, isn't it? Yes, true. Um, Jonathan, somebody's asking uh, about um, our loved ones on the other side. Can they aid or assist us on this side? or help us to move forward or move in certain directions or what are they allowed or not allowed to do? Well, we are, we are not going to live your lives for you or make your decisions for you. That is the, the, your sole plan. You see, we cannot get in the way of that all of the time because you would never have any growth or any progression. So we are here to help and assist. We are here to comfort you, to love you, to guide you through life and, and show you the way that would be better for you. But we are not here to control you or overtake you in any way. That is your decision. And we are here to help you along the spiritual path as well. And someone is asking, Jonathan, if um, our loved ones, uh, if they can see what we're doing on a daily basis, or are they with us 24-7? Uh, or are <laughs> they come and go? What they're asking. We come and go. We come and go. We have our things that we want to do as well. We have our learning and, and we want to be with our loved ones, etc. So, yes. Well, we're not with you 24 hours a day. We do go off and do our own thing, but uh, we do like to keep an eye on you. We do like to gather the evidence. If we think that somebody is coming for a reading, we will know they are coming and we will gather all the loved ones together to try and come through, you see. But uh, no, we do not pester you all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> I do spend time with Elaine because she works uh, spiritually and she thinks spiritually quite a lot but she does have her everyday life to get on with of course and and i have things that i would wish to do on the other side so yes we are there in an instant we we do not have any concept of time if you were to ask us now to be with you we would be with you but we would not uh, pressure you to do more all the time if you didn't want to you see we would step back and, and allow you to get on but uh, if, if you are working uh, on a level of spirituality that where you have uh, allowed your life to be involved in it in an everyday basis, then yes, we do show ourselves a little bit more. Interesting. Um, and what about our spirit guides, Jonathan? Do we have the same spirit guides all through our life here or do they interchange and can we call upon our guides? Well, it is, you have one main guide in this life that is with you throughout uh, your lifetime while you are here on earth and beyond. And, and then they become less of a guide when you go back home again. You, you go back to being perhaps old friends or relatives again from other lifetimes. But I, I will say to you, they are here to guide you throughout your life and they will be with you before that and, and after that. And yes, that is what they are there for. And, and they love you very much. They usually know you from other lifetimes as well. So they have to know everything about you. Okay. So do we, let's say, do we have one main guide and then other guides that come yeah. in throughout? Oh, yes. I, I, have, I have an answer to your question. But I, I want to say to you that others will come in okay. and learn something from you and you something from them. But you, you have a main guide, but the others aren't guides. They are what you call helpers, and they are wanting to learn something amongst being with you and, and teaching you something as well. So that is what they are there for. And, and they may stay with you for a period of time, and, and then they will step back, and, and that is their work done. And they may come back again, you see. They're always going to be there if you need them. But they will step back once they feel that what they have needed to learn is finished, and, and what your journey with them has been done with, they will step back from that. Beautiful. And Jonathan, your work with Elaine, um, did you pick Elaine? I, how, did you, <laughs> how did you come to work with Elaine? I did not pick her. She and I are twin souls. So we, we know each other from eternity, you see. Mm -hmm. We have always been together. 
and I have not lived with her in every lifetime, as you can see, but uh, I'm, I'm here to help be her guide of this lifetime, which is what our sort of spiritual contract was, was for her to come and work on the earth in a physical body, and, and I would work through her on, on the other side. And, and this is how we have planned to, to be together, to work together in, in, in an earthly sense for you. And yes, we do have that plan. And, and your guide will do the same with you. You will create that before you come to the earth. And they will say, well, this is the point in your life where I enter it. And we start to come into the spiritual awakening and we are working alongside each other. So that is what your guide does. And someone is asking, Jonathan, um, they want to get to know their guides, but how, how do, um, how can they, uh, I guess, how, how can they contact or, or um, get to know who their guide is? Is that, would that be through meditation? That is an idea, yes. Meditative states help you relax your mind. And sometimes you will find that your, your mind will drift off to other places, uh, things that you have not yet experienced in this life. And, and all sorts of things can, can happen with the mind. And then the subconscious starts to open up. And, and the spirit mind, which is the pineal gland, part of the spirit mind is in that. And I will say to you that the, the uh, spirit starts to draw close if they ask them to. They're not going to come in and say, well, I want to force myself upon you. They will either come in gently and say, well, this is me. This is who I am. Do you remember me? You are in an earthly body now. You have probably forgotten who I am, but you, this is who I am. I am your guide. And, and they will present themselves to you if you ask them to. But they're not going to, to butt in needlessly. You do not want them there. You are quite able to ask them to step back. But uh, uh, usually meditative states are the best way to connect with your guide. And can you tell us, we hear so much now about setting in the power um, and then meditation. Can you explain the difference of sitting in the power uh, as opposed to meditation, or is there a difference? Well, med meditative states are alterations of the mind, aren't they? There, there are many states of mind. There are states of mind when you go to sleep. There are states of mind when you are awake, the logical mind, the, the ego mind, the spirit mind, the subconscious mind. They're all different states of thinking and, and being in. But yes, I will say to you that meditative states are the best way to get through to the other side, and, and they will continue to come through that way. Okay. And Jonathan, your work with Elaine, um, what, what is your biggest message or what are you hoping to accomplish uh, here? We are hoping to accomplish uh, the spiritual awakening of this life. To, to help people realize that they're all gifted in some way or another, mm -hmm. and, and that there is an afterlife that you go to when you finish with the physical world. So we are trying to take that fear away. That's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to help people realize that they too can get in touch with the spiritual world on the other side with their loved ones. And that will give them great comfort, won't it? So we are trying to heal people we are trying to help them have a spiritual awakening and create that belief in what is absolutely true. And I think you're doing a beautiful job of that. Um, I think, you know, people are um, becoming so much more aware. And where do you see, uh, do you see more spiritual waking in the next, say, 20, 30, 40 years from now? Oh, yes, I do. Very much so. Because your wonderful internet, although be it part negative, there is more positive than negative in it. And it has been especially designed for us to be able to come in and spread the message across your world. Because if you look at the olden days, there weren't anything like that. There was only the telephone or the television perhaps you had in your day. And, and of course, this is a new way of spreading things about. Mm. This is all done for the greater good, you see. Yeah. Amazing. Um, is there anything in parting, Jonathan, because I don't want to uh, keep Elaine in trance too long. Is there anything in parting that you would um, want to tell our audience today or any special message for them to take with them? Well, the special message is we, we love you here on Earth. And we are very excited about your spiritual awakening. And, and do realize, do trust in yourself. 
love yourself and understand you for who you are. And, and then you are able to give your love and spirituality to others. So if you are gifted spiritually, which uh, that you are, because you are a soul inside that living body, and, and come to realize that, come to love you so that you can give your wonderful spiritual self to others and, and let them experience it. Don't hide it away. It is part of you. You are it. It is you. Amazing. So we are wanting to send our love and our thanks and regards to you for putting your time aside to allow us to come and connect with you because we do enjoy doing it. We, we don't uh, see it as a burdensome. You are not pestering us. We want to do it. If we, if we, if we were pestered by you uh, or you were pestered by us, <laughs> then we, we wouldn't want to do it, would we? We, we choose to. We want yes. to do it. Well, well, Jonathan, thank you so much for your time and thank you for all the insight. Um, and hopefully at some point we can speak again. That would be wonderful, my dear. Now, is there anything that you feel I have missed in your question of asking? Because I know Elaine drifts off sometimes and we tend to get a little no, bit. No, uh, I know. And I'm, I'm just trying. I'm looking at some of our audience, Jonathan, to see if um, there's anything that um, they want me to ask you. Um, if you want to see us play through the doll trauma. Um, everybody's just thanking you and, and saying how wonderful you and Elaine are and how, how great you work together. And I, I agree. Um, someone asked Jonathan, do you, um, before we go, they're just wondering, do you prefer doing things like you're doing now or giving personal readings such as mediumship readings? Or do you like the combination of both? I like all of it, my dear. <laughs> okay. I don't mind what I do. And uh, one last thing, John. See, Jonathan, they just don't want you to leave. Um, they're just wanting to know a little bit about you and your time here on Earth. What did you do and where were you from? Well, I was from Islington in London. And, and it was very different in my time. Uh, some of these modern buildings have surrounded uh, uh, London over time. But uh, the Islington uh, St. Mary's Church is still standing in the middle of it all, I do believe. But uh, yes, I, I was a Victorian gentleman. I had money. I, I could, uh, well, I could throw that about if I wanted to, but I didn't. <laughs> I could have, the, 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 you know, the ladies I wanted. That was what the Victorian uh, wealthy man could do. But I, I worked alongside my father and... Uh, he and I didn't always see eye to eye, but we managed, I would say. <laughs> and uh, we worked with the horses and carriages, both he and I. We built up a business uh, uh, together, and it became very well known and, and quite wealthy, you see. So we were able to live well, and uh, we, we enjoyed life to the full. But I only lived until I was 45 years old, and that was oh, seen right. as an age. And uh, unfortunately... You no, know, I, I wanted to do more, but I didn't get around to doing it. <laughs> well, two more questions, Jonathan, and then we are going to let you go. Um, and these are the last two folks. Uh, one person is asking, Jonathan, have you reincarnated before, obviously? You've been on Yes. A... Okay. Yeah. Okay. And someone is asking if they want to develop uh, more with their mediumship abilities or psychic abilities, uh, should they call upon their guides to do that? Or what would be your recommendation for strengthening the mediumship well, the, side? The first thing to, to strengthen the, machine, the mediumship, I would say, I'm getting tongue-tied here, would be to uh, trust in oneself. That is the key. If you don't trust in yourself, if you think, well, this isn't, this is just me, I'm doing this, and all oh, this is just a thought coming into my head, but you need to trust in you. Yeah, and I think even seasoned mediums, you have a hard time uh, trusting sometimes. It takes, a, a, it takes time. Uh, it takes uh, practice and confidence, and I think loving yourself too, um, and knowing the it's healing definitely. that you're bringing to others. It does. You are very right, my dear. You, you have just answered the question for me. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, though, it took time for Elaine to trust in what she was doing. 
It took many years, and sometimes she still has those little doubts inside yeah, her. Yeah. Okay, Jonathan, well, we are going to let you go, and, and we'll thank you, Lane. Um, and again, just thank you so much. I know uh, the audience is just my my – uh, board is blowing up with questions and uh, they would keep you here all night if they could but um, <laughs> we thank you for the time that uh, you did come and answer uh, the questions and again thank you so much you are most welcome my dear and thank you everybody for coming to see Elaine and I I, I must uh, say that I think that Elaine has something to say to you afterwards that uh, yeah. I think is of importance. Somebody has asked her to say it, so I have just reminded her. <laughs> okay. She has a very short memory these days. <laughs> <laughs> bless her. Well, I will take my leave now, and I thank you once again. God thank bless you, you Jonathan. All. Hi, Lane. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. We had such a lovely time with Jonathan. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I, I think uh, my guide was reminding me about the Southampton. It was uh, Mandy Wild. I think she's watching tonight, and she said that we've got a, a, a spiritual event in Southampton on the 20th Uh of April, so it, the advert is on my page if anybody wants to look at it, okay? Yes, awesome. And um, tell us again what your um, business page is, so if people and how, if Elaine, people would like to get an appointment with you and Jonathan, are you accepting appointments, and how do they do that? And someone's asking how far out you're also booked. Um, yeah, they can get in touch on there or they can get in touch on Messenger, you know, through that as well. If I'm, if they can't get through to the spiritual wisdom, because I don't always answer them straight away. So I'm not ignoring you. It's just I get busy with the mundane tasks of life, the, you know, the usual things that women have to do. Real life, so, huh? <laughs> Yeah, real, real life. I can't be stuck in, in spiritual thoughts all day, you know. Uh, um, yes, uh, if you want to get in touch with me either of those ways. You you can email, but sometimes I I I don't always see them. You know, you, if you spend all day trying to go through emails, you'd be there forever. So one or two do do get through on that way. And how far um, out are you booked, Elaine? Well, at the moment, um, this this sort of thing has just started with mm -hmm. me to go man. So April is fully booked. So we're going into May now, and that's starting to get booked up. So if you do want to get through to me. You know, that's it. May May is going to be the start now. Okay. Awesome. So, again, guys, um, Elaine is also, she has some excellent um, videos on YouTube uh, of her and Jonathan. You can also go to her page, and she has, um, you know, the, the Facebook Live videos that she's done a lot of other interviews. They're on there. Um, our, our Facebook Live will be up on my page for... Um, you know, if you want to rewatch, because it was just an amazing amount of information that Jonathan gave us. And um, I was telling Jonathan I could have kept him here all night because the questions just kept flowing and flowing. So, um, you know, you have lots of ways to contact Elaine. And again, you've got to go um, check out some of her uh, amazing uh, paintings. Uh, they are just absolutely uh, beautiful, and I, I highly recommend, like I said, I have one myself, and I'm soon to get another one, <laughs> so I'm just, yeah, just loving them, so we just want to thank you, Elaine, and um, thank you for taking your time and for your knowledge and wisdom and sharing Jonathan with us and, and getting the message out there and the awareness. Yeah, thank you, and, and carry on with your good work as well. Thanks for having me on here, oh. and Thanks, everyone, for watching. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, and just in parting, I'm going to say we are, and I, I don't, I'm embarrassed right now. Uh, I don't have the date, but we are also, uh, Elaine, and I know you know Emma. 
uh, Mather, who does yes, the... Yes, I do. She's, hello, Emma. She's a lovely girl. She is. She's so kind to everybody. And her drawing, well, are it's fabulous. Amazing. Yeah, they are like yours. I mean, just totally. These are probably two of the most. And, and I don't, I, I met Elaine um, uh, through one of my clients, actually, Julie. I think it was you that uh, introduced me to Elaine. Uh, and uh, then I met uh, Emma through Elaine. Um, and it's just been amazing because uh, two such wonderful souls and two women doing uh, the most amazing work and bringing so much awareness um, and thank you. It's May 5th. Julie, thank you for being my assistant because I surely need it. Uh, but yeah, May 5th, we're going to have Emma on and she's going to be uh, showcasing some of her drawings and telling you what inspires her and what guides her. And if you have a ch uh, chance, we'll uh, have her information up too so you can look at some of her uh, lovely uh, drawings. And Elaine, she did uh, Jonathan for you, did she not? She, she did, yeah, and she made a mug for me as well. She, everybody, she's making mugs with your guides on. So how lovely is that? You can drink your guide every yeah. morning. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Um, I think I'm number 44 on her drawing, so I'm excited. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah, her drawings are fabulous. Yeah. The shading and everything, they're so real life, and the eyes are very spiritual in them as well. And then the animation that uh, somebody was doing, you, uh, we saw Jonathan being animated where his eyes were moving. And, no, uh, and that's saying, uh, that was Chris Glover. He, he uh, did that. And that was quite a surprise. Unfortunately, my friend that runs the circle didn't like it. She said, oh, it's a bit impersonal. And oh, well, I don't know who can do that. I said, well, I, th I like it. So that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lee, well, we won't keep you. We know uh, it's it's got to be late out in the UK, right? I mean, it's uh, we're what, five hours? Um, I can't think what time it is. Oh, it's only seven o'clock, so it's, that's still all right. Oh, okay, so we're good. Okay, well, again, Elaine, thank you so much, and um, it has been uh, just enlightening, and, and thank you to Jonathan, and you two are amazing, and keep doing the amazing work that you do. Yeah, I, I will do. And uh, tell Emma to keep up her amazing work as well, because she's such Absolutely. a kind soul. Absolutely. Can't wait to have her on. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing for Emma. Um, I have some of her drawings, folks, and, and you can watch for that on my business page, uh, mm. Terror Impressions by Sharla. Um, I'm actually going to uh, do a video with music and have all her different uh, paintings that she did for her. So I can't wait to get that done. I just have to find a little time, but we'll get that done soon. So, yeah, yeah. so thank you. Don't do those mugs. I think some knew that she started. And the mugs are amazing. Yeah, yeah, the they mugs. are. Yeah, yeah and I'll, uh, uh, folks, I will post uh, her mugs and some of her drawings. Well, some are already on my page, but um, I will make sure I get those mugs on there because, uh, like Elaine said, they're just amazing. Um, and Man, having my guide and coffee in the morning would be absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking your guide. You can't get any better than that. So you can't, All right, can you? we'll let you go. And thank you again. Okay. God bless okay. you all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.